Hello everybody, it's Dan Bigman, your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com. And we're gonna deal with a question that I've gotten several times recently. And so if a couple of our students at LearnGPR have asked the question, then maybe it's something that you are also thinking about or that you struggle with in the field when you're out collecting GPR data. And the question is, uh, um, you know, should I go into single orientation when I collect a grid or should I go in you know, two different orientations, right? Perpendicular uh, grid collection. Um, the answer is yes, right? And it's gonna depend, right? In, in both senses, right? The answer is yes. It's gonna depend on what you're trying to locate and whether or not, you know, it also gonna depend on time, okay? What you're trying to locate and time. But let's kind of deal with this uh, uh, under a couple different scenarios and situations. So, right? For, orientations of grids, all right? Orientations of grids, what we're dealing with today. Let's say that you have a small target, an isolated target, and that target, okay, so here's the target, and this could be a grave, right? It could be a grave, so something like a grave. It could be a underground storage tank. Uh, it could be, you know, help me out here, <laughs> whatever, okay? Something that's isolated, right? Something that's isolated uh, uh, like this. And so grave, USD, right? Some isolated uh, target, right? Like an archeological target, okay? How should you address this? Do you have to go in two different directions or can you go in one direction? For something like this, you can go in one direction, but it's good to know some information about the size of your target because it's gonna drive what your transect spacing should be. So in this case, ideally, I mean, ideally you wanna hit the thing like on a diagonal because it's gonna give you the best kind of resolution, but usually you may not have that ability. Um, to look at it diagonally, okay? So what really you want to try to do is, is, go perpen, you know, is, is go perpendicular to the long side of your target, right? So if this is a grave, you want to hit the grave in this direction under normal circumstances, right? Because it's going to give you the best shot at hitting it the most, the most times. So if you can go this way and the grave is, you know, two meters okay, long, then, I mean, literally a meter spacing, which I don't recommend, but a meter spacing, you still be able to get the target and you'll hit it two or three times in a survey that's going this direction. Obviously, you want to go smaller than that, but you want to especially go smaller than that because what if you guessed wrong? Or what if there's an unmarked grave or there's an underground storage tank or something else that actually you're hitting in this direction, right? So instead... You're not conducting your survey in this direction. You're conducting it in this direction. And let's say, you know, from here to here, it's only, you know, 75 centimeters. Okay, it's only 75 centimeters in this, in this way. Well, you're coming this direction. Are you gonna see it? Yeah, you'll hit your target probably. If, but if you are one meter, right, transect spacing, you could miss it. So you need, if you're going one direction, you have to go smaller than the smallest side of the target that you're looking for. So if this is 75 centimeters, at minimum, minimum, you need to be at 0.5 meters because that's gonna allow you to hit it twice. And ideally, you would be even smaller than that. Okay, but 0.5, you'll still likely hit it, hit, you'll, you'll still hit it twice and uh, that should give you decent resolution for your target. So it's okay to go in one direction if you have a small isolated target like this, okay? If it's an underground storage tank, maybe it's a little bit bigger. All right, so maybe it's, um, you know, 1.5 meters in this direction, and maybe it's, you know, three meters in this direction. And so this can, spacing can be a little bit greater, but you still need to be smaller and really try to get to half of the smallest side. So you can hit it at least two times, if not three times. 
So that would be ideal when you're going in one single direction. You have to be small enough, but you'll still be able to hit it and get a decent resolution for it. What about if you're trying to locate a linear target, right? A linear target, right? So these were isolated targets. But what about if you're trying to locate and identify a linear target, right? So linear would be, you know, like a, a pipe, utility, a buried wall, rebar, post tension, okay, linear targets. So let's say instead you have um, you know, two pipes crossing in this direction. And you're only going to go and survey in one direction. And so you end up going this way, right? This is your These are your transects. Let's say they're spaced out at, you know, two meters. Okay, right? Two meters, two meters. You miss this pipe or utility or gas line, right? This pipe was completely missed. This one showed up beautifully, right? This one's beautiful right here. Okay, that's beautiful in your data set. But there's a pipe that you completely missed, okay? Pipe you completely missed. Maybe maybe you went one meter. Let's say you went you went what you went one meter. Okay, one meter, one meter, one meter, one meter. It's kind of at an angle, but you missed it. You missed it. When you're trying to identify linear targets, it's always better, and I would suggest you should always do this: is go in two different directions. Okay. Now what happens? is you hit both pipes multiple times. There's one, and you hit this one. Okay, you hit both pipes. Now let's say you say, but Dan, I don't have a lot of time. There are budgetary constraints. There are time constraints. There are labor constraints. I can only go one direction. You're better off, I would argue, doing you know, half the resolution, but in two different orientations. So think about it like this. Instead of doing uh, one meters, right, one meter spacings, let's say you did two meter spacing instead, right? So let's say you did two meter spacing instead. And, you know, so now I can remove this. All right. Okay. And we'll go ahead and remove this. Right, so now you actually only, right, you have, it's, it's uh, two meters, two meters, okay, one, two, three, and let's say the same thing over here, right, is, uh, uh, you know, take this one out, okay, um, and now you have two meters, okay, and let's say that you take this one out, And so we'll go ahead and get our utility back up here, right, in both directions. You're only going two meters. Instead of doing four in one direction or, you know, six in one direction in our example, you do three and three, right? So one, two, three. In this case, you're still hitting it. And then same thing over here. You're still hitting it, hitting it. Hitting it, right? Hitting it. Uh, actually, so you're hitting it, hitting it, and hitting it here. Okay? Now look, you still have got both of them in your data set with worse resolution, but at least you identify both pipes or both utilities. By not going in two different directions, you can completely miss a utility, a pipe. Completely. It's, you know, and it's something that happens regularly when people only go in one direction. I would argue you're almost better off going, right, if you can only do 
10 transects, do five each direction instead of 10 in one direction because you can probably miss something that's linear or hit it only you know once or twice if it's on a slight angle you might hit it once but that will just look that won't look like a pipe right that'll look like a single node a single reflection event that you just might throw away as being a utility because it doesn't come up as linear so you can still hit a pipe and not identify it as a pipe if you only hit it once or you only hit it twice that's a possibility so you know, you're better off, I think, doing half in each direction, but going in two different directions to try to identify all the possible targets in there. But really, you should talk to your customers and clients or your major professor, let's say that, you, you know, if you're a, 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 a graduate student or college student, um, you know, is going in multiple directions. When you're trying to identify linear targets, you should try to have as best a resolution as possible in two different orientations. So this is important. This is important. You can go one direction when the targets are isolated. I highly recommend that you go perpendicular directions when you have linear targets because there is absolute possibility that you can completely miss a target. And if you do, and it's the real world out there, and it's a construction site, and bam, some service gets hit, then people can get, you know, safety is compromised, people can lose services, people, uh, uh, um, you know, communities can get affected by it. So go in two directions, I highly, highly recommend it. If you found this valuable, if you understand what I was saying, then please you know, like, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know what you feel in the comments below. You know, how do you carry out your grid surveys? Do you always go two directions no matter what the target is? Do you always go in one direction no matter what the target is? I'd love to hear your comments below. Pop over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in, get our a uh, free introductory video, it's a 40 minute video, um, so you can kind of learn some more. If you didn't understand what we were talking about here, learn some more and we will send you videos to your inbox every single week. Thank you so much, I wish you nothing but the best.